Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt Denathley here. Welcome to episode 163 of Snack Minute. Uh, this week, we actually have a new guest. Haley's joining us from Splunk to talk about risk-based, risk-based alerting. And uh, so, Haley, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, and then we'll jump right into it. Yeah, hi, thanks for having me. Um, so I am a staff security strategist over here at Splunk, a Cisco company. <laughs> and uh, basically that means I used to be an engineer uh, and now I make PowerPoints for engineers. Hey, that's what I do. <laughs> oh yeah, no, so I, I mean, I, I do get to carve out some engineering time. I've got some cool stuff um, building out for RBA, but uh, yeah, uh, dude, do a whole mixture of things over here, but I've been here uh, almost three years now. Nice. Well, welcome. Well, welcome to Snack Minute, Haley. Talk to us a little bit about RBA. I would be happy to. Um, if people haven't been introduced to Splunk RBA, uh, you'll find a lot of content with my face on it or uh, name on it. Basically, it's a method of uh, aggregating low fidelity events into like high fidelity aggregated events. And like the the way I would try to describe it, because I used to be an engineer trying to solve the problem of like every time I deployed a detection, I felt guilt and shame for all the false positives I was creating as soon as I turned it on. So when I was introduced to this method, it sort of t- tied it all together. And basically you're just like, rather than like a detection, like here's your logs, here's a detection and out pops an alert. The idea is just one layer of abstraction in between that. So You've got your logs and then you make an observation, I like to say, rather than a detection. And that goes into an index that stores, well, like, what is this? The MITRE attack, uh, any relevant security metadata, you can throw a score on that. And the score can dynamically shift based on attributes about the entity that it's firing on. And then I like to think of that as like a bucket of events for each object in your environment, whether it's a user or a system. And then you only alert when there's enough interesting observations overflowing out of those buckets. So it allows you to not only increase fidelity because you you get these sort of like uh, security relevant, relevant observations that you would never alert on by themselves, um, but are interesting and are security relevant. And so it it frees up a lot of room for you know, things that shouldn't be one-to-one detections, uh, or if they are, they're just overwhelming and your analyst gets used to closing them out with no action. And that's not ultimately good for security. It was introduced to that in uh, 2018 at Splunk's user conference. And uh, yeah, ever since then been an evangelist. Is this something that um, developers have to take into consideration while they're writing the code? If they're going through a practice of uh, integrating observability into their application directly um or is it something that oh we just have to tie it into the splunk platform or whatever um let's talk about splunk today um if we're just leveraging the splunk platform as our observability platform it's something that's inherent to the platform itself or is it um or is it more involved from the developer aspect or is it more an operational portion yeah i mean it's a little bit of both because it's not necessary it's just a methodology really oh okay in 2018 when it was introduced it was sort of like utilizing features that are already built into splunk as far as like you know the lookup command and like pulling results and then putting them into a new index so like i said it's sort of like an abstraction layer um, so, I mean, you could use the concept uh, in anything, really. <laughs> like, I've, I've thought about, like, oh, if I did RBA with my my health data, like, you know, mm-hmm. my, my, my genetic history of, like, you, you know, heart disease or cancer or whatever would be, like, a risk factor that would adjust the score. But then I could have risk events of, like, my health over time. Really, it can be used with anything. It's just Splunk has sort of productized it and sort of tied it into the platform. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 excited to to sort of uh, bring in all the Cisco goodness uh, into that uh, Splunk goodness because uh, yeah, it just I, I use it for everything. I think about it all the time. Obviously, you seem really uh, very passionate about it. So um, from your experience, I uh, you know. You, you just talked about bringing in the Cisco ecosystem to plug into to, to Splunk as well as, well, which are, it already does, as well as um, kind of introducing that RBA into the, the mix. Um, what are some of the use cases that you see out there today uh, with RBA? So there is like 
the uh, ever expanding, everything is relevant, malicious compromise use case. Like, you know, that I can use every log ever for malicious compromise. But I think there's also really like constrained use cases where it's really powerful. Um, and uh, one of the main ones being like insider risk or fraud, like just bubbling up things that are relevant. Like I just want to attach like this is interesting, this is interesting, this is interesting. And then when it reaches thresholds, I want to, you know, uh, pop off an alert. So for for insider risk, you know, sometimes the difficulty is like those events are happening over 90 day time frames. So like how do you realist realistically there's no way to one to one alert something unless someone's like touching crown jewels right. <laughs> but there's so much other things that's relevant under insider risk so that's a really good use case uh fraud is another one for like customer interactions like this ip is doing something weird um i've seen customers do something where like uh they they, they make like a punch card of like here's weird things a a user could be doing if they have like uh akamai data like where they navigate between pages too quickly or like they jump between a page that shouldn't be jumpable unless it's like scripted. So you could just find every IP doing that punch card of like malicious weird things and then ban all the IPs at once. So as soon as an attacker like starts running their infrastructure and their credential stuffing and all that, you can just within an hour gather, you know, hundreds if not thousands of IPs doing that set of weird things and ban them all. Wow. So, so preemptive, fraud is a preemptive uh, protection on DDoS attacks would be awesome <laughs> or is awesome. Yes, and D DDoS is another one. Yeah, exactly. You know, what's funny when you were talking about um, risk-based or RBA my health data, I thought, so I don't have to be worried if my blood pressure was too high the other day. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll log that as a risk event. Uh, just to Another data point to throw in there. I'll check it over 90 days and then I'll come back and let you guys know how I'm doing. It's um, probably bad, man. <laughs> I, I really think that there's a lot of questions I could ask, but I think um, we should have you come back and give us a, a live demo of how to set up RBA, some of the examples that you see in the uh, in the Splunk dashboard. Um, what do you think, Matt? Do you think we should do that next? Yeah, I think that that's good. I think um, conceptually, um, I, I think I'm getting it. It would be cool to see it in practice to kind of, um, you know, solidify it for me. Um, I, I think it's definitely worth having you back to see how we can do this because, um, you know, a lot of our snackers are um, working IT operations. I think it'd be helpful for them to understand how we can look at these things, not just from the application layer, but potentially thinking about how um, we can look at the actual traffic patterns and understand at the network layer how things are how things are interacting, um, and be able to uh, use the concept of RBA not to have the alarm going off every second, but you know generally going through the practice of saying all right not everything is not everything is on fire but if it is let's make sure it actually is before we freak out about it um i think that that can be helpful in any layer within it operations um and conceptually we need to do more of these kind of security focused discussions anyway yeah. um because uh we you know as we move into the um the aspects of IT operations being managed by AI, I think it's helpful that if we're taking humans potentially out of the loop in these monitoring situations, it's definitely helpful to understand when we do need to insert a human back into it, that it's for a reason and not because we've generated uh, data that is incorrect. Yeah, so um, much noise. Yes, definitely. Haley, we'd love to have you back and, and do a demo on this. Um, and unfortunately, this is a quick one. Uh, snack minutes, uh, they go really fast. And I'm sure we could talk to you about this forever. But before we wrap up and before we ask you our last question, since you're a new one, um, is there anything you want to talk about RBA before before we hit you up with our, our new guest question? Mm, I mean, I think I covered the broad aspects, hopefully just sprinkled some breadcrumbs. Uh, you know, if there's, there's plenty <laughs> of content out there, if, if you search for me, uh, there's also the rba.community website where we have office hours and all that stuff if people want to dig in. Oh, cool. Fun. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, cool. Okay. Kareem, I'm, I'm going to give you the honors. Okay, well, we do this with all our new guests, uh, as Matt said. And uh, if you have to pick one superpower, uh, what would that be and why? So I think I've worked out a a sort of workaround to get two powers technically, because wow. really what I want is flight. 
But I think also very cool is telekinesis, which if you're doing on yourself is flying, I think. Yeah, technically, you got it. You figured it out. That's the loophole. That's the Jean Grey loophole. Because, <laughs> yeah, because because flying it sounds amazing. Uh, but uh, with telekinesis, I'm imagining like, you know, sorcerer's, sorcerer's apprentice style, like, you know, the, my chores are being done and behind me and my cup of tea is brewing which now just appears oh, and they'll, like I they'll have be an ai for out. that <laughs> soon <laughs> yeah, right. uh superpower with a loophole that's, that's awesome. a new one that's, that's a, a new, new one, one. Yeah. That's a new one. <laughs> Haley, thank you so much for your time today uh we'll definitely have you back for uh, a live demo of this and uh snackers stick around for another episode check out our resources on cisco u we have uh brand new splunk tutorials talking about security maybe not rba yet but we'll definitely get something in there for you uh but head over to use.cisco.com for uh some great tutorials out there thank you snackers don't 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 don't